Hello everyone. Welcome to Mules of Training by Yellow Geeks. In this video, we'll see how to use async scope in a mule application. Okay. In the in the previous video, we have built a mule application with a two flows. We have built a mule application with two flows. And in flow one, okay, so we've got two flows. And we are invoking flow two from flow one with the help of a flow reference. And these two are independent flows. And in flow two, we have a, a, a transform message component with a wait logic of five seconds. And then we are logging a message uh, just saying that a flow two is invoked from flow one. And then we are setting a payload um, as flow two payload. And in the flow one, we are again overwriting that payload where we are setting it as a flow two payload, oh, sorry, flow one payload. So in short, we had two flows. And when we try to invoke flow two from flow one, we've seen how it all works in the previous video. In case you haven't watched that, please watch that video first, wherein we talk about uh, different types of flows available uh, in a mule application. Uh, what exactly is the difference between a flow, subflow and a private flow? And we've also seen how this application works. Uh, please watch that video first uh, before you proceed with this one. Uh, but I'll just to give you a brief recap, if you are invoking one flow within, uh, within another flow, so like here we are invoking flow two from flow one with the help of a flow reference, we notice that the calls are working in a synchronous manner, meaning a flow one invokes flow two here and the flow one execution stops there and uh, it, it pauses there, pause is the right word, and a control goes to flow two. Flow two will execute all its processes, which includes a wait node of five seconds, and then a control comes back to flow one, and flow one resumes after that. And then it executes uh, the remaining process you have in a flow one, and uh, uh, the execution completes, and you will have a response sent back to the client, right? So uh, just, just to show you how it works, if we invoke flow one now, flow one is invoking flow two. In flow two, we have a wait logic of five seconds, meaning a flow one also pausing, or flow one has also passed for five seconds. And only after flow two has thrown back a control to flow one, this set payload component got executed and you've got back a response. So that means the calls are working in a synchronous manner, meaning flow one is waiting till flow two completes. This might be uh, this might be the case. Uh, this might be the requirement in in some of the uh, real time use cases, wherein there is a dependency between the flows. And yes, the flow one needs to wait for flow two to complete. But it might not always be the case. In some cases, you might want to kick off something uh, in in say flow two, which has got absolutely no dependency on flow one. And a flow two can can do its job in parallel, and flow one can continue with its processes. So, in other words, I want to call flow two, but I don't want flow one execution to wait till flow two completes. So, I want to make an asynchronous call to flow two from flow one. And even if it is an asynchronous call, you will still use a flow reference component. But in addition to flow reference, or in other words, you need to wrap this up with async scope. So you have a core element called async. So you can use async scope to send out to send out uh, to make asynchronous calls. Or if if you want some process to work in an asynchronous manner, you could include them in this async scope. So I want to move this flow reference to async scope. Let's save this and to there, there is a UI issue here, so you just close the flow and open it again. You should you should see it uh, opening normal. So from flow one also, I'm uh, even now I'm invoking flow two from flow one with the help of a flow reference, but I have wrapped it around an async scope. And what this async scope will do is it will change the call from synchronous to asynchronous. And what that means is if I invoke the flow one now, and the application is coming up, I believe. Let's stop and start the application. Okay, 
So once the application comes up, if I invoke flow one now, yes, the flow will get kicked off uh, from from uh, with the help of this flow reference. But flow will flow one will not stop because you're making an asynchronous call here. So flow two will get kicked off. It will do its job. But flow one continues with other processes, and you should get back a response from flow one in less than a second. But you will see this logger message getting printed in the log after five seconds. Okay, so this will establish that uh, yes, uh, the calls have become asynchronous now with async scope. So let's wait for the application to come up. And while this is uh, this is coming up, you will typically use async scope in real time to perform actions which are uh, which are uh, pretty time consuming. Like if you if you want to start up a server or if you want to uh, do something which will uh, take uh, quite a bit of time, and if you don't want a main flow to wait till that point uh, till uh, till till or for that long, in such case you will make uh, you make use of async a uh, scope, and you will drop all those processes. Which which are time consuming in the async scope, which uh, and and those processes you have to be mindful there, and those processes should not have dependency on the flow of flow one. Okay, so yeah, the application is up and running. Let's go ahead and fire off a request. You see that we have invoked flow one. We've got back a response as well. But if you see here, a flow two is kicked off, but it. Flow to pause for five seconds and then a log, uh, log message got printed there. So if you scroll to the right, you see that uh, you're seeing a log message, but this log message came up after five seconds uh, after triggering flow one. But you've got back a response immediately as a client, which means yes, flow one invoked flow two in an asynchronous manner and flow one executed this processor and it has sent back a response. Just to show you how it works one more time, I've sent in a flow one request here. I've got back response immediately, but you will see the logger missing message getting printed now after five seconds. Okay, so that's how uh, async scope works, or, or that's how you can make use of async scope to make asynchronous calls between the flows. It works the same way, uh, whether, whether it is an independent flow or a subflow or a private flow. If you make use of async scope, it will turn the calls into an asynchronous calls. Okay. In the next video, I'll show you how to use a private flows. I'll, I'll first explain what private flows are. And I'll also show you how, how to use them in a mule application. Okay. I'll also talk about when to use them as well. Join me in the next video, please. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. In case you're interested in mule soft training offered by Uno Geeks. Uh, just ping us or uh, ping us on this number on WhatsApp or, or send a uh, or, or give us a phone call. You can also mail us on info at gradeunogeeks.com. Thank you.